Okay, so this will be last lecture on this KCM. And maybe there are a few slides that are uh, maybe a repetition for those of you who attended the mini course, but I put them in case there were other people from the outside. So this is a joint project that is um, started maybe a couple of years ago and uh, now found a conclusion. Uh, so it's, uh, so, in, so Cristina Toninelli, she's in Paris and is uh, the principal investigator of a ERC grant. And then Rob Morris in IMPA, and then uh, Ivai Lartarski and uh, Laure Marichet, they were two, two students of Christine. Okay, so, um, okay, so the general framework uh, we shall explore interplay between bootstrap percolation, which is a cellar uh, automaton used to describe spreading of diseases, and a kinetically constrained model, KCM. So it's a class of constraint spin model that are, uh, have been introduced in order by physicists in order to understand some of the features of the liquid gas transition. Okay, so we first start with the, some slides on bootstrap percolation. So at time zero, you spread out over Z2. So we will only work on, uh, on in, in two dimension mainly because the result of, of universality for bootstrap percolation so far has been written only in two dimension, but the group of around Bolobash, they are finishing the paper in higher dimension. Okay, so in, in Z2, you spread out infection IID with probability P. So I'm very sorry for the people attending the mini course because P here is what I call Q there, namely the probability of the good vertices. Okay, and so in fact it is green and healthy red, probably should be the other way around, but, um, and then, uh, so at time one, healthy vertices with at least two infected vertices become infected, okay, and then you iterate, okay, it's certainly monotone, infection never, never heals, and uh, so this is a picture that I took from um, the homepage of Alexander Allroyd. Um, so this is for P uh, a little bit small. So the initial density of infection is a little bit small. And colors are according to how many iterations you need in order to infect a vertex. Um, so black, they are infected immediately and then blue, azure, green, yellow, white. So you see that there are still a lot of, a big region that has not been yet infected. And uh, so basic question is, first of all, whether the entire lattice will become infected that we already answered in the mini course, but the answer in any case is yes, was proved by Van Enter. Much more delicate is the question is, typically how long you need to take, to infect the origin if P is small, and that was answered by Allroyd in 2003 and has this very, very precise form. A very, very long time, exponential, exponential in 1 over P with even a precise constant. Okay. So then, uh, um, essentially, so people around Bolobash, Bolobash included, they had the idea of, uh, instead of focusing on specific model, like the model that I just described, they, they said, what about a generic model with generic rules for infection? So previously the rule was at least two neighbors are infected. Now you could ask, you know, maybe one neighbor that is 1,000 steps from me to the right is infected and another one that is 45 degree, three steps is infected or whatever. Okay, some crazy rule, okay? And this is called u bootstrap percolation. So. An update family is a collection, is a finite collection of finite subset X1, Xm that are called rules. And all these subset are subset of the lattice, but, not, but they do not contain the origin that is important, okay? And then the U bootstrap process goes very similarly to what I described for the two neighbor process as follows. So imagine that at time T, you have a subset of infection uh, in, in Z2, then 
at the, the next time t plus one, so here time is discrete, uh, a, an LT vert vertex becomes infected if uh, there exists a rule, I mean, pretending that X itself is the origin, there exists a rule uh, which was already infected, uh, you know, previously, okay? And, and then, uh, you know, um, square bracket A, so if A is the initial set of infection, then this is the total infection that you get over all the life of the process, okay? So here are some examples. So the Duarte model uh, U consists of the two subset of the south, north, and west, not east, neighbor of the origin. The south or west process, the one subset of the south and west neighbor means meaning that if either your south or or maybe both west neighbor are infected, then you then you become infected. Then the northeast process that we discussed already in the mini course is both the north and east neighbors are infected, and so on and so forth. Okay, so these are just examples. Then uh, the, the main variable that they consider, so here actually the randomness in bootstrap percolation comes only from the initial condition, how you spread out the initial infection. The rest is uh, just an automaton, so it's deterministic rule, okay? So, so you take A, you know, P random, so IID, and then you look at the infection time of the origin. So the main question is, first of all, will the origin eventually be infected for all values of P? We already saw that this question has positive answer for the two neighbor model. Uh, but in the mini course, we explained that it, this is not true for say the Northeast model, okay? And then if yes, so if the first answer is yes, then how does uh, the infection time behaves in some, you know, mean, median, uh, or with, uh, almost surely, when the initial density of infection goes to zero? So that, those are the main questions. And, uh, okay, Bolobash and his group, I'll put more precise name later on, um, understood that uh, it is necessary to do a geometric analysis of the infection rules in order to answer to this question. Okay, so uh, first they introduce the notion of a direction being stable. Okay, so a direction is stable if starting with no infection in front of the direction, namely here, and putting all infection behind the direction, so in the half plane behind you, okay, then no infection can cross the line orthogonal to you. Okay, I hope that this is clear. It's like a hard wall. Okay, it's like a hard wall. Okay, so let me give example. So south or west model, meaning south or west are infected, then the then the red direction are stable and the green direction are unstable. Okay, so in particular, you should observe that there is a, actually there are many semicircles that are free of stable direction. Okay, this is a first hint for future slides. For the Duarte model, uh, so the Duarte was, so north, south, or west, and you take, you know, a pair of vertices here should be infected, okay? Then uh, all this semicircle is infected, uh, is, uh, is, uh, consists of stable direction, and then the other one, uh, the opposite is free of, uh, it has only one stable direction, which, which is the positive horizontal direction. Then the northeast model has, you know, three quarters of the circle that is stable. And then Bolobash, Smith, and Azol in 2015, they gave the following general classification. So they call it, so the U process is super critical if there exists an open semicircle, open semicircle that has no stable direction. It is critical if every open semicircle has stable direction, but only finitely, and there exists one with only finitely many. And subcritical is all the rest, 
namely all semicircle contains infinitely many stable directions. Okay, these are three classes. Okay, and and then they prove this. Uh, so first, universality result for the infection time of the origin. Really, an amazing result. Um, and the result is like that. Then, if the model is supercritical, namely there is a semicircle without stable direction, then the infection time. Uh, so eventually, the, the the origin will be infected, and the infection time, when the uh, infection density uh, goes to zero, uh, diverges as inverse power. Okay, that's the first result. Then, if u is critical, namely uh, there is no open semicircle free of stable direction, but there exists one with finitely many inside then still the origin eventually will be infected. But now the scaling of the, of the infection time is much sharper, namely the divergence is much sharper. So is, I mean, within, uh, you know, exponential one over, one over p to some constant and, you know, upper and lower bound of this type. And then if it is subcritical, uh, then, for, then there exists a critical value of the infection such that if the initial infection is below this value, then with positive probability, the origin will never be infected. Okay? So this is a very nice, first very nice universality result because you can, you know, given a, an update family, you classify the family in, in one of the three classes, and then you are able to answer all of the dynamics are that the initial configuration is random. It's random and the rest is completely yes. deterministic. Yeah. So you could have taken rest to also to have the probabilistic. Is there a, is there, is there a thinking that whatever you get from here is generalized easily? Or? Uh, I mean, you could have said that, okay, if somebody is a neighbor, it doesn't get affected. Oh, so maybe you, you add some randomness to that. Yeah, 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 but uh, this is not, then then things okay. can can change completely. Change okay, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> then there is a refinement, of course. I mean, once you get a result like the previous one, then you would like to understand whether maybe it's possible to determine this the power explicitly and stuff like that. Okay, so uh, so for that we have to understand better how infection spreads in. Uh, um, so here we will, sorry, here we will only analyze supercritical and critical models so for which the origin eventually will be infected. Okay, we will not say anything about subcritical, subcritical model. And um, in particular for critical models, those that have a very sharp divergence of the infection time, like the Holroyd result, okay, um, one has to understand better how infection spreads in the system in order to maybe figure out a more precise version of the universality result. So let me consider the two neighbor process just as an example. So imagine that you have a column of vertices that are all infected green. Then this column, without any help from the vertices that are to the right, is not able to propagate to the right because in order to propagate, you need, if this, if this is infected and, and this one is not infected, then in order to infect this vertex, you need at least one vertex, say here, there, or maybe to the right in order to become infected here, okay? So, however, the observation is that as soon as you have just one extra infected guy, then this column can move at least one step to the right, okay? So, um, now, the, the probability of getting this extra help, this guy here, is very, is close to one as soon as the height of the column is long enough. Longer than enough here means a large constant log one over p over p. Okay, it's a simple computation. Then, let's loosely speaking, uh, call any such column a critical droplet. Okay, and then, in a sense, you can imagine that inside your system, there are somewhere there are these critical droplets. 
they with high probability get the necessary help to travel. And so imagine that they always get this help. Okay, that's strictly speaking is false, but can be cured. Okay, then in a sense, you have how long you have to wait for the origin to be infected? Well, you have to travel far from the origin until you find one of these critical droplet, and then this critical droplet will be able to travel from its original position to you, to the origin, and infect the origin. So now the probability of one of such column is one over p to the height of the column, okay, or size of the column, okay, and this gives you immediately this, this so the probability is exponential minus log square over p, and so typically you will find this column at distance, which is one over the probability, and therefore the time should be proportional to this distance. Okay, so this is a heuristic that, uh, first of all, is wrong because in many situations this log is not there, okay? But at least starts, you start to see why this one over p. Now, however, this p here, so the power one here, is strictly related to the fact that just one extra vertex infected is enough to be able to travel, okay? So, so in general, one has to introduce, in order to formalize the notion of this extra one infected vertices, uh, so maybe for other models it's not one but two or ten or whatever, okay, one has to introduce the notion of difficulty of stable direction, okay? So we say that, uh, so we have a stable direction, we have infection all, you know, behind that, the direction, behind the line orthogonal to you, and we want to understand what do we need, what extra help we need to propagate, say, forward in the direction u, okay? And let's say that if we find a group of alpha vertices infected, then we are able to propagate. In the previous example, alpha was just one, okay? And then we call, so the smallest group of extra infection that you need is called the, so the cardinality of the smaller group is called the difficulty of the stable direction. Of course, I'm, I'm, I'm not giving you the, you know, very precise formal definition, but the essence is this one. And then you take as difficulty of your model, you take a minimax. So you take the maximal difficulty of all the stable direction, and then, in a, in, so you fix a semicircle, take the, the, the highest difficulty, the maximal difficulty inside that semicircle, and then you take the minimum overall semicircle, so the easiest, the easiest semicircle. And then you can, uh, it's easy to, to check exactly as in the previous example, that now the size of the critical droplet that before was constant log divided by p to power one, just because one was enough, now becomes constant log one over p divided by p to the difficulty of the, of the system. Uh, and then there was in 2016, so three years ago, Bolobas, Duminil, Copen, Morris, and Smith, they proved that in this case, the, um, the infection time scales in median, say, uh, as exponential of one over p to the alpha, so they determine exactly the exponent which coincides with the with the difficulty of the system, and this tilde hides logarithmic terms. Actually, even they were even able to decide when and, and when not this log term are there and to which power. Okay, so super precise result. Okay, so we are done with bootstrap. Okay, now we go to the uh, KCM version of bootstrap. Okay, so in a sense, can be a, can be understood as a stochastic version uh, of the U bootstrap model. Namely, with rate one, every vertex tosses its own coin, okay, and head is probability p, and then if x in the current configuration was infectable by the bootstrap process, namely there is there exists a rule you know, uh, with, the, with x the origin that is completely infected at that moment, then 
you refresh the state of X infected or healthy, uh, putting uh, P with probability P, uh, you, you put infected, and uh, uh, with probability 1 minus P, you put healthy. Okay? So now in this process, you infect the vertices with very low probability if P is small, and, but you can heal infection. Okay? So infection can go back. Okay? Okay, so a uh, main obstacle for mathematical analysis of this KCM is that they are not monotone. More infected vertices into the system, they may have unpredictable consequences. So, uh, so there is no FKG inequality or censoring techniques of uh, Perez Winkler. Uh, and typically, if you try to do worst case analysis, which means taking some L infinity now in some, in some of the Estimate is, is terrible, is, is, is too rough. And uh, uh, if you examine the coercive inequalities like Poincaré logarithmic Sobolev or modified logarithmic Sobolev for the generator of the process, they typically behave very differently from, say, high temperature spin system. Okay, so it's, I say it's a delicate, as we saw already in the mini course, is a delicate field in a sense. Okay, so here is a little digression. Uh, so um, you may ask whether there are other Markov processes uh, that have constraint, and uh, and actually there are. These are self-organizing particle systems, SOPs. Okay, and so in a self-organized particle system, uh, simple computational elements. I'm really not an expert, but I'm very curious about what's going on. Uh, so simple computational elements called particle with limited memory and communication self-organized to solve system-wide problems of movement, coordination, and configuration. For example, uh, they invented a Markov model uh, with, with constraint in order to simulate behavior of ants colony that, for example, when they have to cross a, like a crack or, yeah, maybe like a crack in the ground, they are able to form a bridge of ants, and then the other ants, they just walk over, okay? And uh, so they were able to reproduce such behavior with local constraint on the, on the Markov process. And so there is a very active group uh, led by Dana Randall at uh, Georgia Tech, uh, and they construct an effective stochastic algorithm, Markov chain, to do that. And actually, the algorithm is based on this Amebot model uh, on the triangular lattice that is very, very similar to a simple exclusion process with kinetic constraint that has been considered by physicists within this uh, uh, glassy dynamics uh, um, theory. So, it's, so there are contacts with other fields. OK, this was just a little digression. Just maybe students know that there is also this area. Uh, which very, is, is very interesting and fascinating. Also, so back, back to KCM. So then for KCM, we want to ask exactly the same question that were asked for, the, for bootstrap percolation, namely, uh, so you take tau naught is the uh, infection time of the origins, which is a heating time of configuration with you know, infection at the origin. And uh, first of all, say on average, for, okay, so this is very important. We are able only to, to treat the equilibrium process, namely the KCM Markov process when the initial distribution is the product Bernoulli measure, which is the stationary measure and is also reversible. So, uh, is a big question mark is, uh, what is possible to say when this mu is replaced by another distribution, maybe even product, but with a different p. Okay, so p prime, okay. Sorry? Oh, no, it's translation invariant, so I just look at one vertex and say the origin. Okay. okay, so first question is the scaling of this uh, average heating time uh, is the same, should we expect the same scaling as the infection time for bootstrap? Uh, okay, so very general bound. So uh, a lower bound, so this average uh, heating time is at least 
say, the medium of the bootstrap um, infection time, okay, some constant the bootstrap infection time, and I warn you that this, first of all, I mean, the first guess would be, yes, they should behave the same. When the bootstrap infect the origin, then more or less also the other process should infect the origin, but it's not sharp, it's false, okay? And then the upper bound uh, is that um, this, this is less than the relaxation time, so inverse spectral gap, if there is a spectral gap in the spectrum of the Markov generator divided by, by P. And this inequality is true only for the stationary process because we work on this, okay. It's clear, okay. So mathematical tools, so eating times are related to a Dirichlet problem. And so Dirichlet problem involve eigenvalues of the generator and therefore it's very natural to consider Poincare inequality for, for, for this problem. So Poincare inequality is like the variance less than some constant depending on P times the Dirichlet form or quadratic form of the Markov generator. Uh, and the Dirichlet form takes the form as the sum of the average of local variance at each vertex, but the local variance is multiplied by this C sub X, and this sub X is the indicator that X is updatable or infectable by the bootstrap, namely there exists some rule that is zero, okay? And, okay, so lower bound on this relaxation time uh, is uh, via, you know, cut, cut set technique, namely you find some cut set in the phase space and prove and try to estimate the cut set ratio. Uh, but, but um, so in all cases we had to use cut set they were really very sophisticated and then found in an algorithmic way. Okay. So, so here is a zoology of possible scaling. So one neighbor uh, in bootstrap is polynomial, in KCM is provable to be polynomial. So south or west is polynomial in bootstrap, is not polynomial in KCM, is exponential log square p. Okay. Two neighbor is exponential one over p in bootstrap, the same for KCM. Duarte, which is critical, so must be exponential of one over p in bootstrap. And in this case, there are the logs, square of the logs, very precise, okay? Here is like the square of that, log four to power. Okay? So in a sense, there are these anomalies, and we have to explain this in and anomalies, right? So, okay. Sorry? Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. exactly. Okay. So in a sense, um, our work was sort of to, to explain this anomaly, okay? And, okay, north, northeast is plus infinity here and plus infinity there, so fine. So let me explain the main difference between the two processes, because otherwise one does not really understand why, why it's possible to get something different. So it's very reasonable to call energy of a configuration the number of infected uh, sites. Of course, I mean, on the infinite lattice, this number will be infinite. So uh, you should, you know, take the physicist attitude. Okay, so uh, let us pretend that we are in a super large box and then make sense, okay? Um, or actually, what are really interesting are the difference in, 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 in energy, okay? Now, in bootstrap percolation, energy or the number of infected vertices plays no role, namely, the more infection you produce, the better for infected the vertices, right? And you don't care whether you have to produce a million extra vertices in order to infect the zero because there is no cost for that, okay? However, for the stationary KCM, uh, in the stationary distribution, infection is very unlikely. Therefore, if you need, in order to infect the origin, to produce a lot of extra, so to, to go through a large deviation with respect to the 
stationary distribution, this is very, very costly, okay? And therefore, in order to infect the origin, you should find a way that has sort of the minimal energy. You, you would like to do a deviation from the typical behavior under the stationary distribution, which is the, the less costly, okay? So that's the, uh, okay? Uh, and so energy barriers, so a, a very, very simple model. So t if you take the one neighbor model uh, and, and you want to infect this guy here, well, you can infect the next one and then heal this one, then the next, uh, infect the next one, heal the previous one, and so on and so forth. So, so the energy barrier here is one, namely you have to create, you know, you, you can see only two infections at the same time in order to reach this point here. Instead, if you, uh, if you consider the East model that I did describe in length in the mini course, namely you need an infection to the left in order to become inf infected, then the, log the barrier now is logarithmic base two in N. So you need to produce much more infection than the previous model. So it's very natural to imagine that the infection time of the origin here is much, much longer than the infection time of the one neighbor, and actually it was, okay? It's polynomial against exponential of log square, okay? So there is a refined classification for supercritical uh, KCM. So a supercritical family is called rooted if there exists two non-opposite stable direction, otherwise is unrooted. So example, south or west is um, rooted because there are actually many non-opposite stable direction. And say, an inf uh, the rule that you need an infected side between the left or right neighbors is unrooted because the stable direction are the north and south direction. And then uh, uh, our first result is the following, is that if U is supercritical, so for C supercritical in bootstrap is, polyn is one over P to some power, okay? Then here, if it is unrooted, it's the same, so it's polynomial. If it is rooted, instead, it's like the East model, so it's P to the um, log one over P, minus log one over P, okay? And so the upper bound, uh, this was do, uh, so it's joint work with Morris Christina. Uh, and the lower bound instead is joint work with Christina and uh, Laure Marichet. Uh, and actually it's based on a, on a remarkable combinatorial uh, work that uh, Laure did, uh, purely combinatorial, okay. in estimating this energy barrier for rooted model. Um, Okay, so the main difference in rooted and unrooted is the following, that in a rooted model, a, 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 a droplet big enough of infection can only move in a cone, okay, so sort of cannot backtrack in a cone, can only move in, inside forward in a cone, while in an unrooted system, a droplet of infection, this yellow guy, can move back and forth. So moving back and forth is, resemble the one neighbor model while only moving in one direction resemble more the east model okay and there is so this analogy is really pushed to the to give a mathematical result okay so maybe uh, so I, I, sh I, I I don't have a lot of time so maybe I'll, I'll skip that because I want to go to the so now, so we go instead to critical uh, KCM, so critical family. Uh, and uh, so here we need to classify, to subclassify critical family that for bootstrap is just one universality class, okay? And they always behave like exponential one over P to the alpha where alpha is the difficulty of the class. So here we have to, to split into two subclasses, so class A, there are overall only finitely many stable direction. Class B, there are infinitely many stable direction. For, for example, the two neighbor model is an example here because there are only four stable direction. Uh, 
And the Duarte model is an example here because there are infinitely many stable directions. And so here the result is, uh, so with Kristina and Ivai Lartarski, we are, you know, we have the final draft now. Um, so, um, okay, so, so if the number of stable direction is finite, then we have an upper bound uh, apart from log, which is like the bootstrap upper bound, one over exponential, one over p to the alpha. Um, and using the lower bound, namely that this expectation is bigger than the median of the bootstrap infection time, and using that, then we conclude that we have a precise upper and lower bound of this type here. Okay, so, so the theorem is like that. So the, the power is alpha. Um, um, no, there, so, so there is some, uh, at the minimum, well, uh, of course it's doable because it's a finite family, finite set, etc. Um, I don't remember, there is some result by Morris and uh, Smith, I guess, on uh, the hardness of this problem, but I, now I don't remember, yeah. But, but there is some issue about that, yeah. So universality for class B, when there are infinitely many stable directions, okay, so, uh, so there is a lower bound, and this was uh, by Artarski, Marishi, and Cristina Toninelli. So they prove a lower bound with, using cut set, okay, which is exponential one over p to the two alpha. So up here it is two, okay. And this combined with an upper bound, similar upper bound that we have with Morris and Cristina, okay, uh, allows us to conclude that now there is this. Uh, so the power now is twice the power of, of the bootstrap. And um, so this, this lower bound here was um, uh, sort of based on, uh, uh, on a very detailed analysis of the Duarte model. Um, and for the Duarte model, uh, we prove with uh, Lor, Marish, and Christina, so just appearing in a soft probability that, uh, so for the Duarte model, the scaling, we even found the, the log. So log, log four divided by P squared. But the key point for all this analysis was the lower bound and with a, a, a very interesting cut set find, found in an algorithmic way. Uh, and um, so here in, in this, uh, Sorry, in this paper here, they really had to sort of generalize this cut set to, to any family in class B. And in doing that, they had to really uh, improve considerably also on some algorithm that was invented for uh, analyzing bootstrap percolation. So this is really very, this is a very nice contribution. Okay, so... Um, so maybe I would like to just to explain a little bit uh, the, 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 the subtleties of getting this alpha power uh, in the case of finitely many stable directions. Then I'm done. So imagine that you have a model in which you have, say, four stable direction, and the easy, direc the easy direction is alpha, difficulty alpha, and then all the other directions, say, difficulty beta, say alpha is one and beta is a million, okay? So, so it's very hard to grow in this direction or this or that, much easier to grow towards the right. Okay, so imagine that you have an infected droplet like that, okay? And, um, well, this is the easy direction, okay? And then you imagine that this droplet moves towards the right in an east way. Okay, so you infect, you infect, maybe something back comes to, 
to heal what you have already infected because you want to keep the energy as small as possible, okay? But really in a nice way. And if you do that, immediately you conclude that the correct time scale should be exponential 1 over p to, to, to the 2 alpha, okay? However, uh, with Ivailo and, uh, and Christina, we uh, found, and that's the key for, for, for the solution, a more efficient but actually much, much subtler mechanism that, uh, that also allows to move easily in the apparently hard direction and keeping you know, the time scale much smaller. Okay, so again, so imagine that you have your droplet and the north, west, and south direction are very difficult to, 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 to proceed, uh, while in, the, in, the, in this direction is easy. So in order, say, to grow vertically, you need beta, so maybe a million of infected vertices patched together. So it's clear that Typically, if this length is 1 over p to the alpha, part the log, you will not find this, this patch of infection necessary to proceed vertically. However, you will find it if you move, you know, this distance to the right with high probability. So the idea is that you move easily in this direction until you find these patches. Then you, you grow an extra layer vertically. Then you start to go back. And at the end of this trip, you have grown one layer more in the hard direction. Okay? How long does it take to, to, to do this step vertically? Well, essentially the time that you need to go this distance to the right and then back. Okay? And the time scale, if you do the appropriate computation, becomes exponential 1 over p to the alpha. So, so putting, so apparently there is a combination of east motion for mesoscopic scale that allows you to capture what you need to move in the hard direction. And therefore, effectively, you, you get a, you know, a, like a one neighbor model in all direction, but each step requires you know, this length of time, okay? So if you, if you combine all that and re really requires going through a, a series of Poincaré inequality that are non-trivial, then you get the, 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 final, uh, the final theorem. So maybe, um, so the summary is that characteristic time scaling KCM, can, they can scale very differently from the bootstrap. So the new feature of KCM is that they present energy barriers and a more refined classification characterized system for which this energy barrier really matters and a universality result emerge. So open problems, okay, so more technical maybe, but pin down the various logs and maybe we are even able to do that. Uh, as I mentioned, for supercritical and critical KCM, start with the initial distribution, which is not a reversible one, okay? Known only for very specific model. And then subcritical system, like the Nortis model, start with P just above this, the critical value, and try to understand what's going on there. Uh, this was only solved on regular trees by, by so together with the, uh, um, and Crini and Christina Toninelli. Uh, okay, thank you. These are the inhabitants of our uh, building, right? <laughs>